Yeah, somebody told me it was Bartlett Collins, and I searched and searched and searched and searched and searched, and I couldn't find anything that Bartlett Collins made uh, that was as, the same as this. Who knows? I might have missed it. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there for the fond recollections that lie there. Well, good, good evening, good folk, and welcome back to the old curiosity shop. I'm Scott. Sitting here in the 1925 bungalow, I've got a thrift haul for you. Now, everything that I'm going to show you tonight will be available in the old curiosity shop. That's right. No live sale. I'm going to be listing every item. The old curiosity shop is my eBay store and the link is in the description box below. So you can go there and check it out if you'd like. Now, right now it's pretty anemic. As you know, I haven't been listing much in the last two months, but I'm gearing back up into the new year with a new schedule and some new ideas and some things I'll run by you later. But the items tonight, I think maybe four of them are currently listed and the rest of them will be listed uh, Tomorrow, which is, I don't know, the 22nd, Thursday the 22nd. So if you don't see the item, it hasn't already been sold. It's just that, well, I haven't gotten around to getting it totally listed. And you know me, I usually like to have the things listed before I do the thrift haul. But uh, I guess we're all kind of busy this time of year. Now, speaking about Thursday the 22nd, tomorrow... I hope you'll join me 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the first, maybe annual, who knows, Christmas Eve 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 Pajama Party. That's right, with prizes and special guests. You may already know who some of the special guests are. They're all, uh, they are all YouTube uh, creators and sellers of antiques and, uh, vintage items from various eras. And so you probably know who some of them are. We're gonna start at 10 p.m. and go all the way until midnight. So get into your night attire. Fill up the coffee table with all your holiday snacks. And let's do it. We're going to have trivia questions. We're gonna have name that tune. It's gonna be audience participation. It's not just gonna be me sitting there going bleh, bleh, bleh. And we've got wonderful prizes, which will be shipped to you for free sometime after Christmas. And it should be a lot of fun. Now, feel free to sit back and watch on your old Zenith console, you know, where two or three of the vacuum tubes are blown out and everything is green. Or if you've got a smartphone or a tablet or a computer, you can join in the chat and uh, win some prizes. Tomorrow night, 10 p.m., hopefully, if all goes well. Now, if you're watching this tonight, which is the night before Wednesday, there's a possibility you, you may see me pop on live later tonight. Um, not really to do anything necessarily dramatic for the public, but it's just to test out live stream. So if you haven't missed anything, don't worry about that. It's just a test run if you happen to catch that. Okay, now let's look at what's in today's thrift haul. Um, now I'm going to show you the first item, which is this, but after this, everything else will be very different and I'll explain why. I've been um, teasing you with this and people have been asking me about it. Well, there it is. It's a beautiful uh, green glass vase. It's clear glass and it is fired on. Lots of companies did this. Somebody told me it was Bartlett Collins and I searched and searched and searched and searched and searched and I couldn't find anything that Bartlett Collins made uh, that was the same as this. Who knows, I might've missed it. But I'm not exactly sure who the maker is, but it's a beautiful jade green glass vase with, this is all black, you know, fired on paint. It's not going to chip off of there. It's in really good shape. And we've got beautiful geese with the moon on their wings. Mm -hmm. Is that one of your favorite things? So that's a pretty one. Now, 
Again, it's all up for auction in the, in the OCS. Now, everything else is going to be very different. Um, I'm not going to be shipping anything until after Christmas, so obviously none of this will be available for Christmas gifts. But um, think ahead to those dark, cold days of January and February. Now, tonight, the 21st, is the darkest, longest night, right? The, the shortest day and the longest night. But we've got snow coming all over the country, and it's going to be bone chilling for most of us. I know our friends in England are dealing with some awful cold. And, but anyway, I like to decorate with crystal and blue and clear glass because we take all of these decorations down in January and then it's poo poo. Well, how about decorate with clear glass? I've got some pieces here that I think you might like. And some of them I'm going to um, match together in groups. This is made by Hazel Atlas and it is a cobalt blue pitcher with an ice lip. This is not platinite. Had a bunch of people saying, oh, it's platinite, platinite. No. Remember, platinite is a type of a uh, milk glass, which tends to be a little more translucent. It's not really translucent, but it's a little more watered down than that kind of milk glass. And Hawking made something like it called Vitrock, and Hazel Atlas made something called Platinite. You know, we find modern modern tone in platinite, but this is clear glass with fired on paint. So not a platinite picture, but a clear glass one, probably from the 40s, and there's no damage on it. It's in excellent condition. No chips, no cracks, no fading from the dishwasher. It's all ready to be used. The next item I have is a wonderful little vase here. I haven't had a chance. Once again, most of this stuff is not listed yet. And it's not a, it's not a homemade piece. It's a production piece. You know, just some numbers on the bottom. A pretty little vase there in sort of a milky yellow color, a milky, milky, milky color. And uh, what is that? That's not a calla lily, is it? That has no chips or cracks on it either. And um, then I have a really beautiful old blown uh, cruet. It's a nice old one for the table and it's in original condition and it has a pontel on the bottom that is polished. This is gonna date back to probably 19, it could be anywhere from 1900 to 1920, something in there. Nice old stopper. I like cruets, I don't know what it is. I just like an, a nice old cruet, we all need one. I guess vinegar was a very popular condiment in my house. We used to put it on everything. Okay, so that's a very nice old cruet in excellent condition. Then I've got for you the ballerina vase made by Hager. And this comes in different colors and this is from the 1940s. Now, uh, this little thing is begging for damage and you often find them with damage. And this one has flea bites, but they're very small and uh, I think they're forgivable. She has not been decapitated. It's a beautiful, smooth, um, almost, uh, almost a satin or eggshell type of a finish. And uh, she, the ballerina there with this wonderful circle vase behind her. So we have no cracks on her and there are no repairs, but her little skirt, she got carried away with herself and she's got a couple of little flea bites. There's one there. There's one on the underside and I think there might be one more. There's one more back here. Not bad in terms of damage. You could repair it if you want or just use her the way that she is. But I think it's a beautiful piece in white. Yeah, the ballerina vase, Hager. Uh, from the 1940s and then from the heirloom line and I want to thank everybody who pointed that out to me is this wonderful false story a piece mid-century 1940s 50s and it is in beautiful opalescent blue nice mid-century design by false story this is uh, 12 inches in diameter and about four inches across 
and it's got no damage either. Now, wouldn't this glass be beautiful in um, January and February to, to, uh, to decorate with? You already saw a little bit of the Falstoria piece in Silver Crest, and that's got the Spanish lace design on it. And this is the solid, you know, milk, 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 milk glass after 1971. And it's a nice, nice big one there, probably 10 inches across. Mm-hmm. And it's damage free. I just love all of the, you know, this is, it's nice to use these, these colors, I think. Now this has to be my favorite because I, you know how much I love glass from the 1920s and the 30s. And here we have, once again, another one of these candy jars. That one is stunning. You're tired of hearing me say it, but I guess I'll say it again. Everybody made these. All of the better glass companies of the era made candy jars that look like this and you've really got to pay attention and measure the diameters and to try to figure out which company you know made it. But this one has um, an iridescence on it. We wouldn't call this carnival glass. Uh, it is just iridescent glass, and it dates to 1928-ish. It's a beautiful piece there. And Fenton and Northwood and Dugan, and they all made them. And uh, it has absolutely no damage on it. Look at the iridescence on that. That's a beautiful one. Put your starlight mints in there or those after dinner mints. That is a lovely, beautiful piece. And this could start a new collection for you because you can find these in just about every jewel tone you can imagine. If I saved every one of these I've had over the years, I'd probably have about 50 of them in all different colors. It's a neat thing to collect, these 1920s candy box, candy jar. Yeah, I, I really like these, and that's, that's a fine example of one that I think you'll like. Now I've got, let's do this. I can't believe I'm selling it, so I better go ahead and announce it before I change my mind. Because I don't know that I'll ever find it again. I've never seen it before. You were with me shopping. We were in Pennsylvania somewhere. Mm-hmm. Outside of Harrisburg. When I stumbled upon this wonderful Art Deco frosted glass candy dish. I'll call it a candy dish or a console bowl. And it is absolutely, it's just ice. And this thing right here... Let's take a really close look at it. Look at how geometric it is and the icicles just hang over the sides. This is probably one of the best. Now it's clear on the inside, as we see. It never had a lid, it's got a rolled edge here, so this is very smooth. And it is unmarked. I cannot tell you who the maker is. I tried to find it and I couldn't, but I just love these geometric icicles as they uh, drip over the sides of the bowl. And we have a geometric pattern here on the bottom. Notice it is not picking up fingerprints. It's staying very clean. It's a nice piece, uh, damage free. And uh, just under regular light, it just shimmers as if it's a piece of ice. Pa uh, pair this up with um, other beautiful glass. I can't believe this thing. And I also can't believe I'm selling it, but I'm in the business and it brings me joy to find these wonderful items and offer them to you. Now, imagine if you had a beautiful, uh, well, you can, you don't have to imagine, you can. This is a stretch glass piece. What if you mixed and matched? What if you put that right in the center of that piece of stretch? Look at that. Does that not say cold ice? you know, snow day. Well, anyway, enough of this, but that's that. I have not listed this yet. I keep saying that, but don't think that you missed out. Um, 
we've talked enough about stretch glass. You're tired of hearing me, so I'm not going to go into it again, but that is a piece of stretch glass. This may have been a cheese and cracker. It might have had the compote that sat in the middle. I'm not sure about that uh, because it's flared up a little bit so the crackers would slide. So uh, might have had that, might not have, but it's still a beautiful iridescent. Look at the stretch on that one. It's got an inclusion right there. And sometimes with this glass, you'll get that. So a little fleck of something in the factory, ash or something got in there, and that's sort of embedded in there. And you know, you can see it when I put it right in your face like that, but it's, it's not that bad. Beautiful piece, that almost looks like Stuben Aurine, and that's what they were trying to uh, emulate there among others. So then we have a bowl. Now these were probably not, there were eight or nine or 10 companies that made stretch glass. All the companies that made Carnival. And then here we have a bowl, which could be a console bowl and a fruit bowl or something like that. It's also stretch in a wonderful ice blue. Look at the pattern. They spray it with chemicals and they fire it again. And look at that. You see the chemical was sprayed around the outer part of the bowl, but not on the inside. And every one of these pieces of stretch glass is a little bit different. The iridescent comes out, the iridescence comes out a little bit different each time, but just beautiful ice blue and lovely pieces. How you like my Christmas tree? I'm gonna film a little bit of a, uh, we'll probably just do the living room and the dining room, show you how I have it decorated in the front porch. Uh, I still have to pick some stuff up. I've got laundry all over the floor. Now you know I don't, but I mean I've got stuff on the floor that needs to be picked up. What are we gonna do? We're gonna do those last. Okay, let's do this. Who made sandwich glass? Ooh, these are heavy. Well, remember, um, Duncan, and, Duncan and Miller made it. Indiana made it. Most of it out there is probably Duncan and Miller or Indiana. But um, uh, Anchor Hawking had a sandwich pattern. And somebody else did too. There was, there's a fourth company and maybe a fifth, I can't think. So I haven't really done my research yet to determine which company, you can figure it out. Um, <clears throat> but it, it looks nice together. And what I've got here is four and four and four for someone who wants to start a collection or add to a collection. I've got four coasters and that's exactly what these are. If you look closely, you'll see See the little glass ridges in there, the little lines that cut all the way across for to set your glass on? I think you can see that. Those aren't mold marks on there, but that you'll find that on glass coasters of this era. Yeah. So we have four coasters, which is interesting to find. We have four, I'm going to call them bread and butter plates. I think they're, they are the size of a saucer. They have no... Uh, teacup circle. I never know what to call that thing. Indentation for the teacup. But sometimes saucers don't. That's right. Just because it doesn't have that ring does not mean it's not a saucer and it doesn't mean it is. Well, it does mean it is if it has it. It, it. You know what I'm saying. Some companies did that because it could double as a bread plate or as a saucer. Do whatever you want with it. Feed the cat. But I got four of those little guys. Oh, and then I've got four. We'll call them dessert, luncheon, or salad plates. Uh, they are somewhere around about an eight inch plate. And uh, the sandwich pattern is just beautiful. And each company had a slight variation. And this is to um, mimic the old New England glass out of Sandwich, Massachusetts. But the companies that made this in the 1920s were emulating 
glass from uh, Sandwich uh, Cape Cod. One of the first towns you hit over the bridge. Wonderful glass museum. Go up there. Have dinner at the Beehive Inn on 6A. I don't know if it's still there anymore. It's probably not. Uh, but they have the best, or they used to have the best, baked scrod. I did say scrod, not cod. Have you ever tried it? Somebody let me know. Is the Beehive Inn still on 6A, just outside of Sandwich? It's been a few years. Now... Um, what am I doing? Oh, I'm going to group together. I've got two little groupings. No, let's do this. More clear glass for the breakfast table. Now look at these two pieces. Remember, all of this came from either thrift shops. A couple things came from an antique store, but mostly thrift shops. Let's say you're out thrifting and you see both of these pieces of glass Right now, now it, it doesn't come across very easily in the video, but which one has more clarity? And I know it's you've got all this behind me, but doesn't that one look like the glass is a little bit better quality? Huh? Yeah, this is just like plain old soda lime glass, and we've got all these mold marks, and and um. It's rough around the seams, and look here, we've got marks where it came out of the mold. This is just cheap glass from the, from the 1920s. It's rough, it hasn't been fire polished. When I put my thumb up here, you almost feel like you're gonna cut yourself, you know, when they didn't, they didn't fire polish it. So there's no mark on the bottom of this. Little milk pitcher for the breakfast table. Somebody made it, some company, 20s. Something like that. But then look at the quality of this piece. We've got an applied handle. We can see that. And we don't see, uh, we don't feel mold lines on here on this piece. And um, the glass just seems to be of better quality. Aha. So then we've got this old, it's syrup jug. Of course, we've got an old chrome uh, lid, which will come off. Now, how old do you think this is? Anybody know how old it is? How old do you think it is? Who do you think made it? I wasn't surprised by the maker, but I was a little surprised by the age. It is indeed a piece of Heisey, and I had to look very, very closely for the diamond with the H in the middle. But then as I studied it even more, I found that the piece is dated. Now, let me get it to where I can see it. And the date on this is May the 19th, May the 19th, 1909. May the 19th, 1909 is what's um, on the bot. Now that might be a patent date. I mean, that doesn't mean that this was made on May 19th. You knew that. But uh, we know that it dates to at least 1909. And uh, I think it's just a beautiful piece. And you may not be able to see a little bit of the diamond with the H right, right there. It's so difficult to figure out how to get you to see that. All right, you can see a little bit of it. And I know you're not going to be able to see the date. You have to just trust me that it's in there. I took pictures of it, and you'll see it when you go to the uh, auction site. May the 19th, 1909 on that little uh, syrup jug. So selling these two together <clears throat> as a little grouping. I thought that was interesting. And let's see, as another grouping... I believe, yes, I have paired together, and this is just, just put a couple of pieces together. This is all going to go in one auction, and it's just a beautiful ice blue iridescent candlestick, and this is old glass, and this goes back to the 1920s as well, and it's completely hollow. That's the way these were made. Um, now, 
There is new glass. There are new candlesticks that are hollow like this. Um, but this is the old 1920s iridescent candlestick here. That's a beautiful one. And I'm selling it with this lovely little piece of uh, elegant depression glass. I did not look up that pattern. Uh, you guys can do that. But probably by the time I list it, I'll already have the pattern on there. We always think of Cambridge and Faustoria and Morgantown and and so forth. So there's a little la some lattice work on there and a ribbon. So a little candy dish or a little bonbon actually and a candlestick. We're going to match pair those two up and sell them in one auction. And then in another auction a uh, blown blue pitcher and another candlestick. Now this one is either Northwood or Dugan. There was more than one company that made this particular of color of blue and they put this iridescence on it. Um, it's just one of those things, you know, I, it's up there, you read it, you memorize it, and then a week later, it's gone. It is gone. You know, you met another and you was gone. It just leaves your mind. But this goes back to the 20s. It's one of those good, good glass companies. I keep wanting to say Dugan or Northwood. And it's this wonderful, almost Paldor blue. We know companies who call it Delphite and other companies call it Azurite. Call it whatever you want. It's beautiful. I only have the one candlestick and I'm selling it with this wonderful little blown pitcher with an, with an applied handle. Yeah, so those are nice pieces. Um, you get the theme. You know, forget all this matchy-matchy stuff. Collect yourself blue and, 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 uh, and crystal and white and decorate your house with this. I mean, you know, we all have to shovel the snow and trip on the ice. Hopefully not. Hopefully we don't trip on the ice. And so uh, it sort of gets you through until you can start getting your spring things out, you know, sometime in April. Now, I've got two more things to show you and that's it. Um, I have two antique snow globes that uh, date way back and um, I have to be careful with them because if I jiggle them too much, <laughs> you can't see anything. Now these are old. Now I'm gonna pull it up to the screen here and I know that that circle from my light is right, putting a halo around that puppy's head. So I'll pull it back for a minute. Now these are cloudy and some of the water has evaporated. Very typical. These are about 100 years old and you got 100 year old water in there. So sometimes it's, it's just natural algae in the water because this was not distilled water when it was put in there 100 years ago. And sometimes it's just some of the paint has deteriorated off of whatever is on the inside, but it gets cloudy. Um, and I am not a collector of these. So like anything else, there's always a discussion about restoring them or not. Uh, getting someone who knows how to get this off of there, clean it out and put new water in it. These are cloudy and they've lost some of the water in the top. And um, in those days, uh, the snow would be little chips of um, bone or porcelain. Of course, today it's plastic. Now this is a brown pottery base you know, like what the insulators are made out of. And then we can see a puppy in there with big eyes. I wish my, my ring light didn't put that right around his head, but uh, so we'll, we'll turn it around. I don't know how to get you to see that without that, that light shining on it. But we'll still shake it up a little bit and we'll let it snow in there. There he is with those big eyes. Isn't that cute? Now this one is unmarked. I could do some research and try to find out uh, who made this one. Um, but it's, it's at least 100 years old and I love that. 
I'm selling it separately from this one. So I've got two. This one features a cowgirl and we've got a little more water has evaporated in this one, but there she is with her cowboy hat on. You see her? Boy, that light is annoying, isn't it? Um, I don't know what to do to get for that to not be. Well, I guess you'll have to go, you'll have to go on my uh, auction site to get a better look. But there's the cowgirl and she's got little cow boots on, which is hard to see in there might be a cactus behind her and we'll if we shake this one up this one's really cloudy but we won't shake it up too much but there she is in there and this one is actually made by the uh let me read what it says on the bottom so you can see how old this is and it says uh atlas crystal works uh covington tennessee and then it's got all these patent numbers on it. I didn't look the patent numbers up. I could have done that. See how cloudy it gets. Uh, uh, a porcelain base or, or, you know, hard ceramic base, whatever that is. It's like what the insulators are made out of. And yeah, she's really like, she's in, that's, she's in some polluted, I don't know. She really, it's like she fell into a cesspool or something, poor thing. But it settles in there and, and then you can, then you can see her. Now you say, well, Scott, who in the heck is going to want that? Well, you know, there are, there is some collectability to them. This one, I probably would see if I could get that water out of there and change it out. Uh, but there you can see the marks on the bottom and I'm selling both of them separately in, uh, two different, two different auctions for the antique snow globes. They actually look okay if you just put them on a shelf and don't jiggle them around, but uh, I'm not sure what the collectors prefer. It may add to their value to go ahead and figure out how to, how to uh, cl clean the water up, change the water in there and get them so that they're uh, crystal clear again. Okay, I've got to get it all listed, remember. So uh, give me eh, eh, a day or two. I'll be working on it throughout the day tomorrow before the pajama party at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, and I will be in my night attire, which is not the way you see me now. I don't want to hear any more. Oh dear. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I hope you'll join me. So uh, go in there and you can find it. If you go to my YouTube channel and go up to live, you'll see the thumbnail and you can, and you can click on the button that says remind me. But I think you have to subscribe. Make sure you're a subscriber and then hit remind. So if you're busy doing something, you'll get a notification to remind you tomorrow night at 10 o'clock that we'll be doing, we'll, we'll have our little party. And I would love for you to join us. It's not going to be any fun if you guys aren't there. What did you like the best? Do you also like to decorate once all the Christmas comes down? with uh, blue and crystal and what do you do what how do you decorate in january and february do you just leave your christmas tree up until valentine's i know some of you do all right that's it thanks for watching everyone we'll see you tomorrow night at the pajama party get your eggnog ready i'm scott from the old curiosity shop and until then thanks for watching wait for the cat and so long for now